Welcome to Tech Notice, my friends. This over here is the brand spanking new i9-12900K. And we also have a DDR5 platform with this motherboard, ProArt Z690 Creator Wi-Fi. ProArt Asus, the gift that keeps on giving. So what we're gonna be doing is having a look at Premiere Pro Timeline Performance, so if you're video editor, to see how does DDR5 with all of this setup work on Premiere Pro and if it's any better than, you know, what we tested previously. Let's check it out. This video is sponsored by Artlist, which is also my go to music and sound effects licensing site. Music license from Artlist is covered by a worldwide royalty free license, which includes all projects from personal YouTube videos to high end TV commercials. Once you've downloaded a song with active subscription, it's yours to keep forever. New music and sound effects are added to the site daily, so you'll never run out of choice. There's one affordable annual subscription cost with no hidden fees, and the best part is if you sign up through the links in the description below, you'll get two months for free. So check out Artlist list in the video description below. So I think it's very important that we mention the specs of the test bench over here because if you change some of the components it might be different. CPU you know the 12900K we are using the ROG Ryujin 360mm AIO cooler over here 64 gigabytes of DDR5 from Kingston and it's the Kingston Fury Beast and it runs at, listen to this, 5200 megahertz. It's absolutely insane. For the motherboard, we have the ASUS ProArt Z690 Creator Board and the GPU is ASUS TUF RTX 1390. Absolutely balls to the wall. And for SSDs, we're not holding back either. We are using the Seagate FireCuda 530 drives. So we shouldn't have any bottlenecks. Let's have a look how does this CPU perform then. So first of all, we're going to be looking at some of the mirrorless camera codecs that you might be getting from any of your mirrorless cameras. This is all based on the 4K. We're not going to go into 1080p because that will be um, like very easy for this processor. So if you're working on that codec, it's much simpler over there. Now let's start with this A7S 3 This is 8-bit 420, 60 frames per second 4K footage. And this is interesting. Okay, so our iGPU is playing back this codec and we have dropped one frame. So that's just a, an accident. This shouldn't really happen. See if I press play again, zero frames dropped. So looking over here, this codec is hardware accelerated if you don't know. If you don't know which codecs are hardware and software accelerated on Premiere Pro, I recommend you check out this video that I've made on the channel where I'm going more in depth in that. But at the moment, the iGPU inside over there is playing it back. And it's doing no problem. Also, everything has a color grade on. Don't mind the color grade. It's just to really show you and you can see that the color grade is on and some things have happened. But look at the timeline performance. Very, very good. A little bit of tearing happening over there. But that's often what happens with the Intel uh, QuickSync iGPUs, what I have tested. So nothing special or nothing weird over there. Works very well. Now, this is 10-bit 420 now. And just to like see if the bit depth makes any difference in here on the codec playback. So looking at the timeline, looks very, very similar as previously. This is 24 frames per second, 420, 10 bit, A7S3. So if I press play, absolutely no problem playing it back. And as you can see, this is still played back on the iGPU on the processor. Very, very good. No problems over here. Still a little bit of tearing happening. Next off, we're gonna change the chroma subsampling to 422. So this is 10 bit 422, 30 frames per second. Let's just press play and see how the actual hardware accelerates or how does the hardware work. As you can see, the GPU does absolutely diddly squat now. And our RTX 3090 does nothing as well. It's just playing it back um, like giving the graphics, but it's not actually decoding it. The decoding goes on the G CPU and the CPU is doing an all right job at the moment. So 422, quite good timeline performance over here as well, actually. I'm not, uh, we're not dropping any frames. So I think if you're doing any of that, it's gonna be no problem for you. Now let's up the uh, actual frame rate. So this is 60 frames per second, 422. Let's have a look, how does it work now? Obviously this is also the uh, CPU decoding so there's no hardware decoding for this codec it's it's doing uh, a good job there's no problem full resolution plays back 60 frames per second and to be honest i wouldn't expect anything less from it we're clicking around the timeline it's quite instant actually do you know what? it's very very instant so i'm very happy with this 
So no problem there. Now these are a little bit different codecs over here. This one over here is H.264, 10-bit 422, 25 frames per second. And for some reason, it's often quite hard to play back this, this one over here. And then this one is SI. So if we go over here, this is just less compressed codec, which means it should be easier for the PC to play it back. And this is with a color grade, and I think this is completely fine. So if I'm pressing play, it drops no frames and plays it back. And as you can see, it's still on the CPU. But as you can see, this one, 25 frames per second, because it's more compressed, it's not as good. It's like when we click around the timeline, it's all right, but it's quite hard to play back. So let's press play and see what happens now. It does play back. So if you want to do that, it's no problem. Now this is an absolute nutcracker. The R5 Heisha 265, 10 bit, 422, 60 frames per second. Absolutely insane. So straight away, we are starting to lose some frames. Let's see if this is a continuous dropping of frames. But going here on the task manager, boom, the CPU is 100% utilized over here. It's insane. Everything that the CPU has, it's trying to play this back. Eight frames dropped, actually, it's still playing it back with no frames dropped. This is continuous eight frames dropped, but um, let's have a look at the timeline performance. Bear in mind, this is with the color grade on top as well. And the color grade is actually accelerated through the GPU. So the RTX 3090 is playing back the Lumetri color because it's GPU accelerated codec. So it's it's not bad, actually. It's not bad. Like, it is choppy. It's the most choppiest thing I have tested so far on this system. But it is editable. But I think what you would do is go like half the resolution and then it's a little bit better but still like, it's hard to keep up. It's best to probably go even quarter of a resolution. Okay, there we go. It takes time to play back. It is a right nutcracker, this one. Look at this, just 100% utilized. Oh my word. I'm just curious, how much power are we pulling through here now? 200 watts. 194 watts to play this back. Yikes. So this over here is Canon C200. And we're going to put this full full resolution as well. So playing back this, we have some tearing. But let's press play, see what happens. This is C200 Canon RAW. There is a playback error, but let's have a look. CPU is 100% utilized. But it's playing it back, no problem. And actually the timeline performance is very, very good. So when I'm scrubbing around, it's perfect. Like you can easily edit this. Just have to remind yourself that the tearing is, you know, just because of the software, not because uh, that your footage has been shot weird. Not bad, not bad, I think. So we have some red raw now over here. 4K red raw. This is super, super, super smooth. Um, obviously, this is not hardware accelerated, but it's still playing it back very, very easily. It's very easy to easy codec to play back, and it goes all on the CPU. Spikes a little bit, and then about 27% CPU utilization. Pretty, pretty good. Let's pump up the resolution. Red 5K, okay? So timeline performance is, um, it's okay, not bad. Pressing play, let's see what happens. Yeah, praise back, zero frames dropped. But the CPU is 100% utilized now. 100% utilized. And we did drop some frames over here. Five frames dropped. But I think it's still editable, no problem over here. Let's have a look at the 6K now. So this is a uh, red raw 6K timeline performance is is okay. Like if you scrub like this, it's completely it, it's fine. So let's press play. Let's see what happens. Okay, it looks smooth over there. 
let's have a look. CPU 100% utilized. We're pushing everything we can through this. Okay, between the change of clips, we dropped some frames. And yeah, it keeps dropping frames now. Look at that. For some reason, it can't keep up with this. 6K is a little bit hard for it to handle, which is, which is interesting. I'm just wondering whether this is because the efficiency cores like aren't as, as good as the performance cores because this is here, the 6K the timeline performance is very similar to the 11900K. If you haven't seen the timeline of that, you can check it out. But it, it is better on this 12900K, but it's not massively different because 11900K started to struggle as well just because the eight cores on this aren't playing it back um, like as, as, as good. For example, the Ryzen 5900X, which has 12 cores, played this back like no problem. It wasn't a problem for it. You can check it out on the channel. We've done that video there. Let's move on to a different 6K codex. This, this is B-RAW 6K. Should be very easy codec to edit. Doesn't take a lot of resources from the PC or Mac to play this back. So first of all, this over here is just a single 6K B-RAW clip. We can see we have, whoa, look at that. 33 gigabytes of RAM used. So let's try this with two B-Raws on top of each other. So let's say if you've got, um, you know, I don't know, you're doing some edit. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, and we're dropping frames. That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. 47 frames dropped. Because as you can see, nothing in the system is a bottleneck. The CPU has more room to play it back. We have free RAM and our GPU is not at all utilized either. But for some reason, the decoders on the actual chip of the CPU don't like this as much. So if we play back three now, this is three B rows on top of each other. And again, we are dropping frames. Let me take this uh, color grade off and let's see if there's any difference. Still, even without the color grade, we are dropping frames. So it's not to do with the color grading because the color grade should actually be accelerated on the GPU, but still, you can do it, but sometimes it just starts dropping frames. What you have to do is just press play again and then it should stop, but it, it's not like the smoothest experience I've had on on this this one is red raw 8k we have this motorcycle clip over here we have this sharks clip and then this um, woman's face over here so let's press play and then see what happens cpu absolutely 100 percent utilized here now and it actually plays it back no problem as you can see we're not dropping flames frames flames we might be dropping flames on the cpu no it's not too hot actually it's full resolution 8k it plays it back no problem. Let's have a look that just to show you look 8192 pixels in horizontally and that is the 8k clip. So actually red 8k it can be edited on this. Now it's not the smoothest like experience I've had on the 8k but it's totally doable and you absolutely can edit 8k with this. It might be a little bit choppy and what I recommend you do is like go half the resolution right. You don't need full resolution 8K when you're playing this back. But the interesting thing is, it's not like super smoother with half the resolution. Canon R5 8K. So we'll try this at full resolution first and see what happens. This is another one of those codecs that is woo, a bit hard to play back. So 30 frames per second, 8K, Canon RAW. Okay, press and play. And pretty much we have a slideshow. Oh, look at this. Look at the RAM usage now. 45 gigs used. Insane. That's no good really. So we're going to put it half the resolution. Let's see. Okay, timeline performance half the resolution is pretty good actually. Let me see what was it like on the full actually. Full, not so good. I wouldn't do it at full. I'd do it at half like that. So half the resolution, actually timeline performance, very, very smooth. You can do it, no problem. Uh, but I recommend you have at least 64 gigs of RAM. As you can see, we're using like close to 50 there when screwing through and trying to do this. And 
to be honest, I think the timeline performance here on half the resolution is a bit better than on the DDR4. I think here is where the DDR5 comes in and it's actually much better at playing with back. So look at that, 48 gigabytes was used there. So if it's half the resolution, there we go, you can play it back. It plays it back. Canon R5 8K is editable. So let's press play now. Okay. So this over here is 12K. Each frame is like 85 megapixels. It's insane. We're just gonna press play at full resolution and we can see that obviously the CPU can't play it back. Our memory is about 50 gigs, 52 gigs used. So it's, uh, it's insane. But do you know what? I don't think anyone would play back this at full resolution. Let's try this at half. Timeline scrubbing is is okay. Uh, let's press play. Let's see what happens. It is actually able to play it back half the resolution now. The CPU has actually a little bit room left to play. It's about 90% utilized. It's a bit choppy. It's dropping frames still. Let's move on to quarter of the resolution. Let's see the timeline. Yeah, much better. Let's press play. There we go. I'd go for quarter of the resolution. Look at that. For CPU. It's not bad. Memory, you need a lot of RAM to, to play this back, but hey, it's fine. It's able to play it back, so you can do 12K. Before we're gonna go to the conclusion, you might be wondering why am I testing this on Windows 10 instead of Windows 11, where, you know, this processor was designed for. The reason for that is that if you see my full review, you can see that according to my testing, Windows 11, at this point where I'm making this video, is a not faster than Windows 10. In fact, Windows 10 is actually slightly fast, faster at every single test that I did pretty much. So, especially in Premiere Pro. So I didn't want to cap the performance of the CPU just by going Windows 11, but going with Windows 10, I saw best performance benchmarks. So that's why we're testing it on here. In conclusion, what codecs can you edit with this? So if you've got the 12900K, the full HD, you don't need to worry about anything. You can drop anything to the system and it's gonna do a great job. In terms of 4K, it's it's fine as well. As you can see, uh, the, all the mirrorless camera codecs are pretty much okay, anything you have, especially if it's 420 and not 422. 422 is a little bit harder to play back, but if it's 420, then that means that the iGPU inside the CPU can play it back and utilize the hardware and, you know, push the Intel Quick Sync in and it's fine. So any 4K is fine until we go to H.265 and we have the Canon R5 60 frames per second, H.265 422. That is a really, really hard codec to play back because it's all on software. As you can see, it's doing an okay job playing it back, but if you have that codec and you're working only with that codec, you need some serious hardware to play that back because it's all on software. And the best bet probably would be to go even with like Threadripper. Or check out the playback on the Ryzen 5950X, the creators, the best creators uh, like system we built. And then you can see the playback on that one and see if it's any better. So 5K and 6K, it's not so good. Uh, I think it's just because the performance and efficiency cores aren't as equal as getting literally like a 12 core performance like chip like Ryzen. But um, there was, you can do that, but it wasn't like the best in there. Now when we move back to like 8K, 8K Red Raw played back better than like 6K. That's interesting. Sometimes just the CPU and the hardware, certain codecs work better for there because it also depends on like the like all the stuff inside the chip basically. So 8K on Canon R5 and Red Raw is completely editable, so no problem over there. Overall, I think it's a very powerful chip and the best chip I have tested from Intel, so definitely a big, big, big jump up. Now, is it as good as some of the Threadrippers in playing it back? I think it's really reaching like somewhere between, you know, it's going neck to neck with the Ryzen 5950X in terms of the playback and the 24 core Threadripper 3960X. So somewhere around there. So I think it's a very good chip for the video editing. Best one that we've seen from Intel. Now I'd love to see a Windows 11 update. So hit that subscribe button if you want to see once the chip actually runs better on Windows 11, then we're going to do the same test on Windows 11 when Premiere Pro is utilizing this actual hardware as well and see what has changed. Thanks guys for watching, see you soon.